just understand that I was a sculpture major, kind of just learned to problem solve and make things that worked. And that's usually how I approach everything in my life. So, you know, hopefully it works out for me in the future. Last week, I talked about making Halloween costumes on a budget, recreating my favorite redhead cartoon characters. This week, I'm gonna be talking about something a little bit more elaborate and a little bit more involved. I studied sculpture at the Rhode Island School of Design and one of my favorite things to do is make costumes. And I thought that since Halloween is a little bit jeopardized this year and my siblings really wanted to have really elaborate masks, I would make that for them. So the first thing I wanna talk about is materials. Because I'm approaching this uh, in a very sculptural way, this isn't like, I don't know if this is the best way to go about it, but this is just the way that it feels the most natural for me considering my formal education. I'm gonna be talking about the process of making a mask using an aluminum mesh armature with a plaster gauze first layer and then using plaster to smooth out and finish the exterior. So my sister wanted to dress up with her boyfriend and her best friend as the trick-or-treaters from The Nightmare Before Christmas. I started doing a trial mask the other day and there's a couple of things that I learned along the way and I wanna share it with you. So there are like people walking by. I'm sitting in my garage and I feel, and I sit, I live across the street from an, ele an elementary school and I feel super awkward doing this, but I have nowhere else to work because when you're working with plaster, you definitely don't wanna do it inside. It gets everywhere. Um, there's a couple health risks when working with plaster as it as it is with any powder product but especially because plaster is a mineral composite there is silica in it and if you inhale that i mean if, if you're working with plaster a couple times it, it won't affect you especially if you're using health precautions uh or you're wearing a mask and you're working in a well ventilated area my garage is open and i'm gonna be wearing a mask and especially if you work with it a lot, you definitely don't want to be inhaling it. But where was I? So with this, the aluminum armature that I used, the aluminum mesh, this is a product that I got at, everything here I got at Jerry's. Uh, this is called Wire Form. It's 10 feet long, 20 inches wide. It was $20, I think. It's the cheapest version of this product. There are other ones that have a finer pattern. This one is like a half inch diamond pattern. This works for what I'm making. Uh, you wanna get a mesh that's that makes sense proportionally to what you're making. But each of these masks is gonna be like a foot and a half to, um, yeah, like a foot and a half long. So this works for the size of the masks. Uh, this is also great because it's really malleable. You can pull it apart it, uh, it curves easily, you can compress it, you can fold it. Uh, I'm sitting on a plastic tarp, that's the best surface to be working on because plaster does not stick to plastic. Plaster is actually the colloquial term for this product. It's not technically plaster, it's just a mineral composite and if you look on the packaging, it's called gypsum. So I have two versions of it. I have plaster of Paris and I have hydrocal and hydrocal is the one that I was using when I was at school um, and all my projects. I decided to try to use Plaster of Paris when I was working on this because it's something that I hadn't worked with since high school. It just seems really rudimentary and not the best quality. So I just wanted to see like if these were just connotations that I had or if it was legit. Sadly, I have to admit that if you're going to be doing this, you might want to invest in getting some HydroCal because HydroCal, uh, the one that I got, it comes in a box like this. It is made, I don't know if it's made for this, but it's the one that sculptors or people who work in fine detail or have to have something that's very sturdy work with. And Plaster of Paris, the one that I have, it came in a container like this. And it's, it's all right, but it's just obviously very crafty. The texture of it is not sturdy it's really crumbly the mask that i made it has a lot of fine details and 
I let it dry overnight and it's just crumbling like crazy. Some tips about mixing plaster. So when I was at school, I shared a building with the ceramics majors and they always got really pissed about the way that sculpture majors went about mixing their plaster because if you're in ceramics you're always mixing everything like you're measuring everything everything's very exact whereas in sculpture it's a lot more just like feeling what like what feels right uh so the way that we were taught to mix it is you get a little bit of water you want it to be on the colder side because the hotter the water the faster it sets and also plaster when it mixes with water the chemical reaction makes it get hot and if you already have hot water it will just make it set faster another thing do not stick any of your limbs into plaster. Do not stick your fingers, do not stick anything. Because if it there is enough plaster around your hand or something, you, your hand will get stuck. It's a thing, it's like, it's, it's a putty and then it gets solid very quickly. And there's no way to get your hand out if there aren't, if it's not, if it's not a mold, you can't pull it apart. It, you'll have to like crack the plaster off of whatever you're putting into it. If it's hot and you get something of your body stuck in there, you will just burn. So do not do that. But this stuff is a lot more heavy duty. It's a lot more professional. And that's what I'm gonna be using. But underneath this, I'm using plaster gauze. I got a pack of eight rolls for $24, I think. One of the mistakes that I made in the first version that I did is that I did two layers of the gauze and at first it was light, but when I went back in and I put the plaster on top, it started to get heavy. If it's something that you're wearing on your head, I still have to come up with a device on how to attach it to your head, but... Okay, change in the game plan because I started breaking off the plaster off of the first mask trial that I did and I have no idea what happened, but all of it just came off. <laughs> I tore off all of the plaster and all the bandages and the horns off of the first armature that I made and I think I'm just going to try again. Considering I have made a mother mold before, like I and I even when I was doing that I was using a gauze that it was a gauzy fabric, it wasn't actual gauze and it worked much better than what is happening here so I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. This is where I am right now with the armature. Um, and I think other than trying to get the horns to be more symmetrical, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And I think I'm gonna go get a bucket of water for the plaster bandages, bandages and do a layer of that. Okay, so I got a bucket of water. This is just, uh, what is this called? A multi-mix all-purpose container. Uh, it's four liters and it's a little bit colder than room temperature. And I think one of the mistakes that I made when I first used the plaster bandages, I kind of underestimated how much plaster there was on the bandage. Usually when you wet them, you kind of want to like take off the excess a little bit. So I'm going to try that this time and maybe that'll let it dry smoother. Another thing about plaster, I was just washing out the bucket. It still had a little bit of residue from the plaster of Paris. One thing you have to consider when working with plaster is that you never want to put it down the drain because it will harden in your pipes and clot them and break them. Always want to have paper towel near you so you can wipe your hands.
covering the entire surface with the bandages. I did a really thin layer or as thin as I could and then I narrowed the eye holes. I'm kind of unhappy with how lumpy the that horn is but I'm hoping that in the end it's gonna look you know after the paint job and everything it's gonna look a little bit better but for now this is what I'm working with so it's currently the next day I let the mask dry overnight I also hit it with a hair dryer for about 15 minutes last night and then I just left it alone overnight I didn't touch it I didn't want to let it like I didn't want it to crumble or anything because plaster if it's in that state I think I mentioned this before but if it's in this kind of a little bit damp but mostly set state, it tends to crack really easily. It's not until it's completely set, it's like chalk hard, that it's ready to be handled. Uh, especially something this delicate, something this thin, it will it's really susceptible to crumbling, even if it is just bandages, especially if, if you're casting something. So this is what I have so far. It's still a little bit malleable because this layer is really thin and the... Oh, the elementary school across my street just got let out so there's a lot of parents and kids walking by and i feel so awkward talking but um it's really malleable so and it's really light so it's something that i so a mistake that i wanted to make sure that i didn't repeat uh from the first time for my first trial is making it too thick and i definitely succeeded in that because the first trial ended up being a little bit heavy. I was thinking last night that maybe I could have even made this out of paper mache, but I wanted it to be a little bit sturdier than that. And also I was thinking that maybe I could have made a rubber mold and made it out of a resin, and that would have been a lot lighter and a lot sturdier and easier to paint. You could have gotten like a really fine surface on that. That's way more complicated, a lot more expensive, and a process that's gonna take a couple of days especially because the cheapest rubber uh rubber kits that you can get take like 16 hours to set so this is a process that takes a lot shorter and because i have several masks to make i wanted to find a way to make it, it took as little time as possible so the next step that i'm gonna do i'm really unhappy with the way that this horn the way that i molded this horn particularly because this one has like a really crisp crescent shape and this one is just kind of crushed i wasn't really considering how that would affect the um, the final shape of it i'm hoping that with the plaster i'm gonna be able to fill a little bit of these gaps to just have it a, of a have a more concrete shape uh, something that looks more intentional the next thing to do is just mix the plaster this is gonna bother a lot of people the way that i go about mixing plaster just understand that I was a sculpture major. Nothing we did was ever really technically that developed. We kind of just learned to problem solve and make things that worked. And that's usually how I approach everything in my life. So, you know, hopefully it works out for me in the future. But for now, um, I have this bucket of water. I have this much because I'm going to be pouring a little bit into one of these smaller buckets. I'm thinking honestly, probably a little bit less than half a liter maybe even a quarter liter because i tend to always mix more plaster than i need always mix less than you think you need and then you can always mix more later it's a lot harder i mean especially because the product itself is so expensive you don't want to be wasteful and it's 
hard to dispose of. You can't pour it down your sink. It's like you can pour it down the sewage drain, but even then I'm like, is the city gonna come for me if I ruin someone's pipes? So the best way to dispose of it is just let it dry, crack it into the trash or wipe the buckets down with the paper towel and then throw it out. But even then it's not worth it. So here's my little setup. What I'm gonna do is take one of these buckets, make sure they're clean. Make sure that you have no or as little residue of the previous plaster in the bucket as possible because those dry chunks, once plaster is set, it will never go back to a state where like a malleable state. So any dust or particles or chunks left in the bucket will be mixed into your new plaster and make it really chunky. You definitely do not want that. The big mistake that I made in my previous trial was that because I mixed too much and I made it too thick, I was using a plaster the plaster of Paris, which sets so much faster. So I put too much of the powder into the water and it made it really dense really quickly. And two, I mixed too much. So I wanted to use up as much of the, of the product as possible. But my intention was to just make a glaze. And instead I ended up making just a layer, like a shell that was like half an inch thick and it was way too heavy and it didn't set right. And it ended up cracking. So I'm hoping that with the Hydro Cow, I can make it really thin and smooth. I don't mind getting really dirty, but if you want to be a little bit cleaner, you can have like a mixing stick, a paint mixer that you get at any hardware store for like 30 cents. And then you can have like a ladle or something or a measuring cup to put in the plaster. They say for every pint of water, add two pounds. And I don't know what that means because I don't do anything correctly. You know, I'm not a professional. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and take a handful. And the way that I was taught is just like go in with about a handful every time. Just sprinkle it into your water until it makes a little island at the top. A little powder at the top that isn't dissolving while you're putting it into the water. And I want to make a glaze more so than something really thick. So maybe I should add a little bit less plaster. It really just depends on how fast you want it to dry and how sturdy you want it to be. Usually if I wanted something to set a little bit faster, I would add more and force it into that putty state, but then you're just wasting a bunch of plaster instead of allowing it to just dry on its own. And if you make it too thin, it does end up drying eventually, but it could be a bit fragile. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the density of this mixture. I know it seems really, really thin, but the thing is after a couple minutes, this is going to start to set and it's gonna start going into that putty stage or that workable stage. So for now, I'm going to just add a glaze, like a very, very thin glaze over the mask. In a couple minutes, this is gonna start congealing a little bit more. And I'm gonna do a second layer and start building up the surface until it becomes smooth and ready to sand. I'm honestly kind of into the surface of the mask right now. I think it looks raw and I really like the texture. It's kind of mummy-esque. One of the biggest tips that I have about working with plaster is having a cheap brush that's good enough quality. You don't want it to be like all the hair is falling out or anything, but I have this brush. You might think that every time you work with plaster, you just need like a new disposable brush, but if you take care of them and you wash them right away before the plaster sets it all onto it, that's why you need like a separate bucket filled with water so that you can quickly wash your hands or wash the brush right after you're done using it so that it doesn't set and ruin the bristles. Same thing goes for working with silicones or any synthetic material. If you have a solvent and you wash the brush right away before it sets, you can salvage the bristles and you reuse the same brush over and over again. I just got this one for $3 at Jerry's. I've only used it a couple times so far, but it seems to be holding up. I've washed it like five times, so I'm pretty happy with this. So as you can see, this plaster is starting to set. It has a little bit more weight to it. You want to work with it quickly though, because when it does start to get into that putty phase, it doesn't last long before it gets to that still workable, but it's a little bit rough for painting. And the layers are going to get thicker as it's congealing. I'm also using this to glue down any edges of the bandages that might have started to flip upwards off of the armature. Okay, see, as you can see, this is starting to set really fast. So I'm trying to work as quickly as possible. I think I might have added a little bit too much plaster. I really overestimated that. I'm going to try not to disturb it after I get these horns done so that it doesn't crack as it is already starting to do. I totally overestimated how much I need. 
But with the excess, I'm gonna start just sculpting out and fixing some mistakes that I made with the armature and the bandages. Just smoothing it out. All right, I can already tell the difference in the texture of the Hydropal versus the Plaster of Paris. I haven't worked with Plaster in, I don't even know how many months, maybe like nine. I definitely hadn't touched it since before quarantine. This already feels a lot stronger. I'm gonna try not to disturb the surface as much as possible. It's right now the same texture as a wood filler compound, so that's how I'm gonna start to use it. I'm gonna just start to fill in any of the cracks or crevices that I might have missed or that have developed because of my handling. And it doesn't matter if it's a little bit bumpy, I'm gonna go in with some sandpaper later anyway. So I think I'm pretty happy with my surface for now. Um, I don't wanna touch it because it is really cracking every time I move it. So I'm gonna let it sit and set. The crazy thing is that it already feels harder and drier than the plaster of Paris did after a whole night of setting. So I'm just gonna let it sit and set enough for me to be able to handle it without cracking. I'm gonna give it, I'd say like two hours. Um, and then I'll come back and sand it a little bit. Okay, so I'm back in my garage. It's 6 p.m. So the sun is starting to go down a little bit and it's been about two hours since I last touched this. It's not completely set all the way and the weight of the horns did make the plaster crack a little bit at like at around the top of the head. Thought that I was gonna be able to sculpt the mouth in this part of the video, but I think I'm gonna leave that for the second half. I am gonna go back in in a couple days after this is completely set and I'm gonna show you how to paint it for now. Just uh, to finish off this video, I'm gonna talk about sanding. For the part where I was mixing the plaster, I made a big deal about wearing a mask and I actually forgot to wear it while mixing the plaster and working with the powder form. For this half of the video, I'm gonna be wearing a mask. This isn't the best mask to wear for this job, but it's the best one that I have on me right now and anything is better than nothing. When you're sanding, because the particles fly everywhere and it's really airborne, you know, when you're mixing, you're kind of just taking it from the container into the water and that's it. But when you're sanding, it's just floating all around you and you're gonna get completely covered in dust, but that's okay. So before I get into that, I wanna talk about sandpaper. I'm gonna be using the pads that you put on a palm sander because it's literally the same thing. The only difference is that it has the soft Velcro back so that you can stick it onto the sander, but it works just as fine. You don't have to buy both the paper and the palm sander pads if you're using that for other projects. This one is 220 grit. This, oh, they're both. Oh, that sucks. Okay, this is the only one that I could find in my house. I do also have a file, but I did apply the plaster to have a pretty smooth finish already. So it's not like I'm really hacking away that much. I just wanna have a finer surface. I don't know if this is gonna be too fine. I'm gonna see if this works and I'll show you the process. Let's see, wearing the Yeah, so this pad is still pretty rough. Uh, it says that it's for a fine finish, but I think this will do for what I'm working with. So basically I'm just gonna sand away any of the irregularities in the surface and if I want to get rid of bigger globs like this one right here, I might go in with a fine file. This still isn't set enough where I feel confident to pick it up. I might, before doing any of the decorative elements in a couple days or tomorrow, I might go in and sand some more, but I just wanted to show an example of how to do a clean finish with what I have at the moment. It might look like I'm being harsh, but I'm actually being incredibly delicate. If I put any more pressure, because this isn't set all the way and still it's very thin, it might crack so be wary about the pressure that you apply onto the surface i'm also going to go in and add a little bit more detail and be more specific about the shape of different aspects of the face so for instance on the mask over the nose the forehead juts out a little bit and there's a very obvious shadow over where the bridge of the nose is so i'm gonna sand in here so that it naturally creates a shadow when you sand and it's still a little bit wet it will just clog your sandpaper all of that putty texture will just get lodged in all of the little crevices of the sandpaper and it'll completely lose its texture and won't sand well. So when it's completely set, you'll know because the texture, you can scratch it. And if it kind of gives you that like nails on a chalkboard sound, that's when you know you're ready to sand because it gets really chalky. When you sand, it will come up as a powder instead of being still 
putty like so when you scratch it you'll know if it's putty like if you scratch it and it just like kind of gets under your fingernail you don't want to sand it at that point point. and sanding is definitely something that you want to take your time with because if you force it and you try to get that smooth surface right away you're just gonna be too rough on your project it might take a little bit of time and you want to do it step by step you want to you know be really gentle if there's something that needs a little bit more work go in circular motions it's definitely worth it in the end because it'll be super smooth and a really great surface to paint on you can also if you're painting on plaster you can even do it in like a fresco style and mix your paint into the plaster and apply it like that but i don't think that's really worth it for this project i might do a video where i explore that i've actually never tried it before um but instead of having the paint sit on top you have it mixed into the plaster already so it becomes a part of the structure instead of just a purely decorative element sitting on top but you wouldn't be able to do it with acrylic paint you'd have to do it with a water-based paint because acrylic paint is plastic based and that means it's not porous and plaster only mixes well with things that have a really high absorption so if you mix it with an acrylic it's just never going to set well because it's always going to have the slightly putty texture of the acrylic you can also go in if you have something that is uh if you want to have like a very specific detail you can go in with a, a dremel on a low speed and be very gentle and work on the surface that way but i don't have that and also the dremel heads tend to get clogged really easily so unless it's something really specific and small it's not really worth trying to do that now as you can see i have a little hand file um i'm gonna this one has several different tips on it different grids i'm gonna go in with the smoothest one and just try because this is still pretty gritty I'm gonna try to just ease away a little bit of the lumps around the eyelids. See here, I pulled up a little bit too aggressively and it started to crack the plaster only slightly, but I'm gonna try to avoid doing that again. I've just realized that I shouldn't be pulling back and forth. I should only really be filing in one direction. This is inevitable and a very easy thing to fix. Just mix a little bit more plaster, smooth it on with your finger, sand it down later if you have to. It could also be handy to have a thicker brush on hand just to brush away any of the dust to see the actual true texture of the surface because sometimes the dust can get lodged in the crevices and you'll think that it's smoother than it actually is. Okay, so I actually knocked off a little bit too much plaster over here. I didn't really like the shape of the side of the nose, so I wanted to sand it down to be more symmetrical to the other side but I think I'm gonna have to go in and do a little bit of a plaster patch right here just to fix that okay so I think I'm gonna stop here for now and I'm gonna show you what it looks like I only sanded the right side so I can have a comparison to the, the non sanded side I'm not gonna sand the horns for right now because I don't think that they've fully set I'm gonna patch up the cracks with a little bit of plaster and I'm gonna finish the sanding over the weekend and then I'm gonna post the part two to this video uh, hopefully Monday or Tuesday and that one's gonna be all about how to seal the plaster to prevent it from cracking I still am gonna have to research that a little bit because honestly I am having a little bit of trouble then I'm gonna talk about prepping it to paint and how to paint so I'll catch you then so this is what we're working with for right now. This is the surface that I just sanded a little bit. This took me about half an hour. It's not perfect. And then this is like a patch that I have to fill in. And then over here is another crack because I went in with a hand file a little bit too hard. And then here is the cracking because the horns aren't completely set and I didn't put enough reinforcement over here. So the weight of it is just making itself crack. So I'm gonna try to fill those in. Um, but this is like the surface originally. This is how it was before. Four. As you can see, after I mean, it's gonna take a while, it's always gonna take a while. So, I'm gonna come back with a finished version in a couple of days. 